today I'll be using these items and I will be creating these mice traps here. Good morning, tiny friends, and welcome to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene, and I'm going to show you how you can create these miniature mice traps with just a few items. It's super simple. Now, these ones look kind of brand new. I'm going to age them up. I'm not going to really rust them out or add any rust. I'm just going to make them look really old and used. Now, this is a pretty quick project, so when you have a pretty quick project like this you can make several in a small amount of time so if you're in need of a mouse trap then just follow along I'm gonna take some scrap wood I have plenty of this stuff lying around and you can use uh, craft sticks or whatever kind of scrap wood you have whatever type whatever color uh, for this piece I really don't need to stain it up it's already that color if you don't have any wood, you can use chipboard and layer maybe three, four pieces together. And you can use that as a base as well. You won't really be able to tell. So I'm just gonna make my marks here and I'm marking about a half of an inch to a three quarters of an inch in between somewhere. My measurements are always about or approximately or roughly because I'm usually just eyeballing everything but I'm just gonna cut it down and this wood that I'm using here is really dry and brittle but it is easy to work with and um, once I get it cut here I'm just gonna sand down the ends just to get those splinters nice and smooth with my nail file Okay, so I have my little base piece and I'm going to take my fine tip Sharpie marker and I'm just going to draw a line right around the inside of the rectangle here. Now, I'm choosing to use black, but you can go with any color you want. If you want to make these look like the old Victor mouse traps, you can do that. Um, I know those Victor mouse traps have been around since the turn of the century the late 1800s but um, I also have seen really old mouse traps with the black uh, border so it's up to you how you want to design your little mouse trap I'm just gonna go with black so I'm just tracing it right around the inside and making a little frame here nothing fancy these are gonna be pretty old looking so I'm not worried about trying to be nice and neat about it or perfect okay so I'm gonna take my regular black sharpie marker and I'm just gonna trace around the edges around the outside of this and I'm not gonna cover it completely I'm just gonna put a little bit here and a little bit there I still want that natural color to come through and show so that it looks like it's been worn down just like this so again you can decide to color this completely you could choose whatever color you like but for what I need I'm just giving it an older kind of aged look okay so I've got a piece of uh, the bottom of an aluminum pie pan that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting a very small strip of this and I'm going to take my needle nose pliers here and I'm just going to curl up the end here and I'm just going to curl it up onto itself just like so and then I'm going to trim it into a little square so this is a really tiny micro piece but aluminum is super easy to work with, so <laughs> it's not bad at all. But it looks like this, and this is going to be that little tiny piece that sits on the base of the mousetrap. Now, I don't know if this is where you're supposed to put the cheese. I'm not really sure. Or the bait that you're going to use. I don't really know how to use mousetraps. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm just going based off of the photo here. So now I'm going to take this little mini clothespins, and these are really easy to come apart. You just give them a twist, just like that, and they come right apart. And I'm just going to use this piece here, the little spring in it, and I'll probably use those for something else. But the little spring will lay down just like this, but it's not quite wide enough. So what I'm going to do is just take my needle nose tweezers and pull the sides apart. Now, these are super easy to work with, but I just want to kind of have those two end pieces line up and touch each other. They're still going to be open, but they're going to look like they're connected in the end. And now it'll fit a little bit better on the trap. Okay, so I grabbed my jewelry, jewelry, <laughs> jewelry wire, <laughs> but you don't necessarily have to use jewelry, jewelry wire. <laughs> I can't even say that. <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. Um, I'm not really sure what gauge this is because I've had it for a while. I don't have the package. Um, just go with whatever wire you have on hand that's going to be easy for you to manipulate and bend. So I'm going to take the end here and I'm just going to curl it up like a hook shape and then I'm going to close it down so it looks like a little loop or a little circle here. And I'm going to take my spring and just connect it right to that bar. Now this is going to fall off on me because those bar, that bar is not closed and that might happen to you, that's okay. Because in the end when you glue it down, it's not going to move. I'm going to lay it on top of the spring this way. And then I'm going to take the other end here. If it falls off, just let it fall off while you work with your piece of wire. You can always attach it later. But I'm taking the other end and I'm just going to bend it upwards at a 90 degree angle here. It just might be easier if it falls off anyways. <laughs> so just upwards, straight up like an L shape. And then I'm going to clip it off and I'm cutting it really close to where the bend of this is. So there's only going to be a tiny little piece sticking upwards. But I want to have enough to where I can just curve it a little bit more to make it look a little more like a hook. This is what it's looking like. And then I can go ahead and attach it right back onto that bar, lay it over the spring, and it's ready to be glued down. So now I got all my pieces to assemble the mouse trap. So I'm going to use my jewelry and metal glue by Aline's. Any type of super glue or metal glue or whatever you have on hand will work. And I'm going to apply it to this little base here. I don't even, I'm not, I'm not really sure how to set traps. So I'm going to do it a few different ways later on. <laughs> but I'm just going to apply a little dot here and glue on this square base first. This little metal piece just like so and again I'm just going off of one of the photos that I picked just trying to uh, replicate the, the trap in the photo and then this piece will just be glued right there in the middle I'm gonna put a dab in the middle here and then on the end right here And then I can go ahead and lay that spring down right on there into that glue. And I'm actually just going to give it a little press once I get it on here. Just like so. And I'm just going to press it down right into the glue. And then move my little hook over towards the middle. And there it is. It's really pretty simple. You just want to make sure you're giving that piece just a couple light presses right into that glue. So easy peasy, right? Okay, so now it's time for me to 
aged these up a bit and I thought this would be a perfect time to try that uh, technique with the alcohol and acrylic paint instead of acrylic paint and water to age and, and add some uh, distressing. And I learned this from Little Gretchen's workshop and I've always wanted to try this but I thought this would be the perfect time to get to do that. So I'm going to mix some alcohol here with some black acrylic paint and I'm just dabbing it on the metal pieces here. And using alcohol with the paint instead of water is supposed to allow it to dry really quickly and actually really stick very good to this metal. But I'm noticing that once you just place it down it'll spread out a little but it's not really thin like water where it drips down or you know it takes more time to dry. So I want to thank Gretchen from Little Gretchen's Workshop for showing how to do this. <laughs> thank you. I, I like this way better than using uh, water and acrylic as a aging solution. Okay, so I got all my traps here and now I am going to create some cheese. <laughs> I mean, you can put whatever type of bait you want on your mouse trap. Um, I did leave some of them open as you can see and then some of them are set. So I've got a couple here that are not set and I'll probably be placing them somewhere around the attic. I'm not really sure yet. I guess, you know, wherever there's going to uh, be the need for a mouse trap is where I'm going to place them. And I know the old lady, she doesn't like mice in the house. Now she doesn't mind them in the barn, but maybe she should invest in a cat. <laughs> okay, so for the cheese, I'm taking some polymer clay and I've mixed up some yellow and white and I've got this creamy yellow color. Have you noticed that in the animations they're always portraying Swiss cheese to be a bright yellow but we know that it's not every time I see it in the store it's like a whitish color but I'm gonna go with this cream creamy yellow maybe it's creamy yellow in a round or a block and this is how small the pieces are here so I'm just working with tiny little micro balls and I'm not going to leave them in a round form I kind of want them to be misshapen some like they were just broken off of a block or off of a round so I really don't want to leave them in a fully round shape but what I'm going to do is use one of my Sculpey tools this little wire brush here and I'm just pressing it in all around it and uh, this does take a little time I didn't realize how much time little specks of Swiss cheese was going to take but it did take some time the clay gets very warm and soft while you're working it with your fingers because it's so tiny now in my opinion I think peanut butter works more effective and it's more efficient to use as a bait versus cheese but back in these days I don't think they thought about peanut butter so I'm just gonna go with this really stinky Swiss cheese here and go for that <laughs> keep it traditional right okay so I got my little pieces here and I've did a variety of sizes and this one's a little bit too big so I'm gonna set that aside now Again, I am not sure where to place the bait on these, so I'm just going to switch it up a little bit. Now, I did give them a coat of matte Mod Podge because I want a tiny little speck of shine. I don't want them to look wet. But I'm going to use my Aline's Jewelry Glue here, and I'm just going to glue them down. Now this one I'm gluing right down to that little aluminum square that I created. And then for these other two traps, I'm just going to place them right on the hooks. Okay, so if you're familiar where 
the spade is supposed to be, then you can put yours in the right place. But I'm just going to do it both ways because I'm really not sure. So I don't think it's really going to matter. So once I get these set down into place, that is it. My traps are going to be completed here. And that's how easy it is. You can leave them without bait. You can add a mouse to your traps if you want to get a little bit gnarlier. I don't need to do that. <laughs> so I'm just going to just go with the cheese here. Okay, tiny friends, so here they are. I think it was longer to, it took longer to create the cheese than it actually did to create all five traps. So super fast, super quick and easy, and you can make a good, you know, variety if you like in a small amount of time. And this is what they look like. I love them. I hope you enjoyed this video today, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and click that like button. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these little traps, and I hope you decide to try some for yourself. So you don't need to buy any, you can just make them for your own scenes. So this is what all five look like. I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank all my subscribers. And if you do decide to subscribe, please don't forget to hit that top bell notification button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Now, when I come back, I am going into the back bedroom of the Josephine house and I'm going to create that new wall I talked about in the tour when we were touring the bedroom. So you'll get to see what that wall looks like, how I created it, along with the faux closet. And I'm super excited. I have a new miniature that I'm gonna show you while I'm working on that project. So until then, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.